Hey guys, it's Saturday morning and we are gonna be pouring some concrete here today. We got our footers all ready here and we are going to pour this out with a front loader truck today. So we got the Brentwoods here. We cannot use the conveyor today cause it's broken. So here comes the boys with the white truck. Um, we switched gears on this project. We're definitely going to do the main house out of um, ICF. I think we're going to, I know we're going to use Fox blocks for that. Um, we're still debating on this garage section if we're going to use concrete blocks or uh, go with the ICF. We're so busy this year that uh, this will get this project done quicker. And uh, with the labor difference, um, not sure on the garage though because that gets buried on both sides there's not as much benefit to uh doing icf as there is over here because this is a stem wall so it has dirt on both both sides of the wall so it might not be cost effective but i'm running numbers on that i got my uh icf guy running the numbers on the garage and the house so but we're definitely going to use the icf like i said on this section over here so um, stay tuned. We're going to pour this thing out. I'll try to get a little footage, but my, um, camera here is, uh, battery is pretty low. So I'm not sure if I'll get it all, but I'll try to show you a little bit of it. Stay tuned. Here comes the mud guys. There he goes. Circle T baby. 315-963-2231. Serving us us on a Saturday. Little Robbie in the truck, we call him. We got a big Robbie and a little Robbie. That's little Robbie. Show him where to go, boys. Show him where to go. We already talked about it. Pretty greasy in here today, guys. Hopefully, we don't have any issues. It's very, uh, a lot of clay in here. He hasn't spun a track yet, so we'll put all the shoots we can on this bad boy. We'll put some shoots on you. Let's get some shoots on him, boys. We're gonna put all the shoots he's got on there so we can shoot as far as we can reach here. And then we're gonna wheel that section. He drove right by because I didn't put my cone out. Set him up for failure today. Mm. This is how we're doing this section, guys. We got the, we filled that in with what we could reach. Now we got the Brentwoods here. Yeah, boy. Screen it off. It's going pretty good. We just got to do this middle section where we can't reach it. Homeowners, checking us out. I'm going to have the driver out here because he can't see. Hold up right there. Yeah, hold up for a sec, bud. Okay, guys, we're doing all right. Repositioning the truck. We got all this done from here, all the way around to here. And then we're just finishing this up. We're repositioning the truck. See if we can get him to pull in here as far as he can. Should be good to go. Yeah, hey, don't go any further than that, jeez. And he's good. He's getting in there pretty far. 
Whew. Making me nervous here. There we go. Whatever you can reach right there. Then we'll drive forward. Start right there and then you get you got about three or four feet you can come forward. Start pouring. Gonna fill here and just drive ahead. Now we got old Carl the Kubota here. We're gonna we got to about here. Now we're gonna finish that. Pull the truck around there and do that last section of here. Carl's ripping and ready to go today. Mm. We've used Carl before to four footers and four floors and everything. Alright guys, I just washed up Carl the Kubota the best I could. Uh, we are all the way to that corner and all the way to there where the boys are. So we're going to drive him all the way around the dirt pile to where they are in and finish this up definitely a little bit of a challenge today which we knew we knew it was gonna be gonna shut Carl down uh, hopefully he doesn't get stuck I don't think he's gonna we just walked it down it's pretty hard back in there uh, just finishing up guys I think so yeah it's easier than drilling them in I just put them where the concrete block's gonna go yeah, I'm definitely going to do concrete blocks out here. You're going to have to remark it all. It's all right. We are putting our dowels in now, guys. And we're not pounding them all the way down through the vapor barrier. This just locks that bottom uh, course into the footer. When we fill it, ties it all together. We don't have hurricanes, so we don't need J-hooks on the bottom. Like some... Some areas probably need J-hooks on the bottom, depending on your code, but we don't need that. We're, we're wet setting these every two feet, guys. We snapped a chalk line on the footer like that, right down the center. Chris is just tapping them in. We put some paint lines on the ground here every two feet yesterday, so that when we got to this point, we could just stick them in and go. Second truck is pulling out. Ticket in my truck. See ya. Good drivers today. They did a good job for us. It was a challenge, but we're in good shape. Let's get our dolls in here and rock and roll. Maybe come back over here Monday. Start setting some blocks. All right, guys. Here's where we're at. We are all set here. About to leave. We had some new dirt or some uh, yeah, new dirt. Some fox blocks left from the last project we did. So I brought them over with the black truck and the trailer. We got our wet set of our uh, rebar in there. They're in. And we did not put rebar in the garage because that's going to be concrete blocks, I have decided. Hey, there's a tape measure down here. You want to grab it? Yeah, a Milwaukee there. Yeah, so we're going to lay that out of concrete blocks, guys. I just finally made up my mind i'm just gonna do the fox blocks for the main house here and then we'll pop some uh cmus in there because that just gets buried on both sides and we won't have to parge it or well we might parge just the top but it'll be more cost effective so that's what we're gonna do thanks for watching uh we'll be back here at this job in a couple days i'm sure see you monday yeah monday it's weekend we got beers to drink all right dustin hmm Beer 30 boys and girls. Hey guys, we're back over here at the little ICF project here. Fox Block project. We are going to be doing some perimeter drains today. So uh, we're going to use smooth wall pipe. Dustin's got a piece of it right there. It's perforated pipe. Smooth wall. We're going to put that around here. We got some stone. We're going to stone this hole outside. That way we can work and uh, we're going to run around the garage too and it's going to exit out down there. There's an exit line going out and that's where it's going to exit. That's the pipe we're using. 
Let me see that pipe. This is that's the pipe we're using right there. It's a good pipe. It's better than that black flexible crap. So it's got a coupler built right onto it. Alright. Um here's how we put our pipe in guys. So we put some stone down under it. About four inches of stone under it, and then we set the pipe on. I like to get a couple inches more of stone over the pipe so it's even with the top of the footer. And that will keep the water out of there. And this kind of pipe, you want the holes to go down on this pipe. You don't want them up or the rocks and the dirt will get into it. So this is how this pipe is designed. It's got like these rows of holes, like space like that. So you want that down. And then there's writing on top. You want to keep that writing facing straight up. And that'll put these holes to the bottom. You don't want to lay it like this, thinking you want to catch the water. Because what'll happen is the dirt and sediment will get in there and rocks will fall in there. So you always want to put this pipe like that. And we like this white pipe much better than that black flexible stuff. We are digging out some mud that caved in. We got our pipe in up to here, all the way around to about over in here. It's going pretty good. Just digging out that clay. big rain, monsoon rain over here. Caved in a couple spots. Hey guys, we're back over here to our little fox block project. And I'll show you what we're doing. So to start with, we squared everything up, put some lines in the corners, basically set a, a block in the corners and then measured our links and our diagonals. And once we got that good, we snapped some lines on the footing and then we went ahead and clipped four clips, guys, in every seam of the whole first course. One, two, three, four. That is where you're going to have a blowout with these Fox blocks if you do. We haven't blown one out yet, but we've seen pressure down here in that seam um, on the last pour we did. It actually started to push out so when we vibrated it, so... Um, then, once we got everything clipped, we got ourselves to our chalk line, and then we spray foamed it. So all you gotta do, oh, another thing, leave these tabs on the bottom. Don't try to cut them off, because that gives you a gap underneath, and that leaves you a little room to shoot the spray foam in there. It actually leaves a little bit of room for any excess water to run out. If you're pouring, you won't get any seepage, but any extra water that's in your concrete will run out the bottom and it won't end up pushing your wall up. So make sure you don't trim these off. Just leave them on there. They're on both ends of the block. There's not really a top and a bottom of these blocks, but you see what I mean. So when we're spray foaming, we're just going in this gap and zapping it. Just take your spray foam. I use a, I don't use the window and door kind. I use the regular or the maximum and just stick it under there and give it a quick zap and once this stuff dries this will not move this uh spray foam really hold it really tight it's still drying it's not quite cured but then when what we usually do is do something else for a little bit while that dries the boys are putting in the rest of the drain over here so that's what we're doing i gotta run and get some rebar so basically we're gonna let this cure up maybe take a lunch and by the time we come back, half hour or so, this will be rock solid. We can start uh, building. This is only three courses high. So that's all our materials over there, plus what you see in here. Um, those clips snap in really easy, guys. I'll show, it, show you how they go. So this is the clip. So it's got two different sides. So this side over here, you hook over like that hook it on this side over here you just push down and it snaps right in place so that's how we do it and like i said there's four of them every single seam first course 
I'll show you your second course. But first course, make sure four clips, every seam. Don't skimp on the clips. Plus, if you're doing a full height wall, you may get a blowout on the bottom. So I don't think these are quite as strong as Nadura as far as blowouts are concerned. They work good, but you just got to be cognizant of uh, what block you're using and the limitations of that block. So there's Rowan helping out his brother, Big Biscuit. Okay, guys, we're working on the Nidura, or yeah, Nidura, the Fox blocks here. I want to show you what Chris is doing. We got a rasp here, and we're rasping off. Show them those, those things. There's a little tongue and groove. This is a groove, that's a tongue. We got to rasp that off so it's flush if you're putting a piece in there. Because when you cut, there's going to be none there, like that. So when you put that piece in there, you got it on this side, but the cut side you don't. So we will leave it on this side because it'll lock into that. And then Chris is rasping it off so that it will fit down in there on the cut side. Like, down in there. Otherwise, your wall will actually get a little bit bigger if you don't do that. So a little trick. And then this this particular uh, build has no common seams, so everything is fitting nice because it's 40 by 42. So everything's lining up right on halves, which is like four inches from here over all your cuts. So that cut right there that we just put in, we can clip it because here's the cut, and you got a regular size here for clip, and you got a regular size here for clip just the way it worked out on certain dimensions. So worked out good on this one. We're putting our scaffolding up or our bracing, whatever you want to call it. We're not using it as scaffolding on this one, but we are putting that up. We're driving some pins down into the ground here that we made up out of rebar. We welded a washer on the end of a piece of rebar and that's how we're doing it. We just started this today, putting the blocks down, bottoms all spray foamed. Um, we got everything, all our bars in mostly. We just got to finish this wall up with our bar. And we got to put our vertical bars in. You can see down in there, we got our short bars down into the footing. So that's where we're going to put the rest of the verticals going up. So they tie into the footing. And that's how you do it. Once this is all braced, we'll be ready for concrete. But we are gonna build the garage out of regular concrete blocks. We got our perimeter drain all in. We put a sleeve over here for the water line. It's just a piece of two inch PVC. It goes underneath the footer. So we extended it out. I dug it out a little bit so they can just, we'll put a board in there when we backfill so they can find it later but our footers here are all ready to go all backfilled this is going to be concrete blocks just to save some money we will drill rebars into this footer ties in we're going to make it some tie-in rebar sticking out of the fox blocks too i'll show you how we do that our drains all in it goes all the way out you can see tip of it right there that little green pipe coming out we backfilled it in some stone just to keep the big rocks off of it and stuff and it's solid so once it hits here that whole drain is solid pipe all the way around this is per perforated pipe so this will soak up any water no water should ever get up in there because this pipe actually drops down it comes along where this step is we got a couple of 45s in here. Underneath here, we got a 45 and a 45 here, and the pipe comes down at an angle. And then we will put marified paper over the stone and keep it clean. And we're going to tie our blocks in concrete blocks right here. So we're going to actually put some rebar into this wall right inside of here. They'll stick out. And then when we cast this wall, that rebar will be in, in our blocks and we'll fill the cells of our blocks right in here. It'll tie that all together. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> kind of 
kind of glad we did this section out of fox box instead of we were thinking about doing this out of concrete blocks but just the uh, labor is not too cost effective we can do this so much quicker it's gonna be a nicer wall anyways we're using them where it counts this garage don't really matter it's getting dirt on both sides of the wall so it's all buried so it doesn't really matter you'll never uh it's never gonna move especially with good drainage and good backfill it'll never move but that's how we're doing it guys stay tuned i'll get some more footage for you i didn't get a ton of footage of us putting this wall together because we did it so fast i mean it was so quick just 40 by 42 three courses just a crawl space so that's all they want they're not even gonna pour a floor inside there he's just gonna spray foam inside here there's gonna be no floor in this just all spray foam so we didn't even fill it up with stone up to the top of the footer he figured he'd have more headroom if we didn't so that's what we're doing stay tuned all right guys i'm gonna show you something we got to tie into this wall with our block wall so what we did is we put a mark at six inches and we went up to 12 inches or eight inches off that six inch mark and then these are all eight inches and i'll show you later why we did it that way but we're going to lay our concrete blocks in here these rebars are going to be set in this wall we put a j hook on them so we're going to try to get them in there like that the J hook, and then we're gonna cast them in place. We're gonna hold them up straight once they're in there. So these will actually go in the cell of the block, and that's what's gonna tie our block walls to our ICF wall. Because when we pour the ICF, these are gonna be in there, and they're gonna lay right into them that block wall. So that's how we're gonna do it on this one. So I'll show you what that looks like when we pour. I'm at the block plant guys, me and Clifford getting some blocks. We're able to get two cubes inside Clifford. I was able to drop my tailgate down here with the chain on it and they were able to slide two pallets in. I think you can get three pallets on the trailer. They're gonna push them in and then we got some mortar and stuff so it's actually gonna work out pretty good. Should be able to haul about 450 blocks this setup it's a ways we got to go to watertown to get these blocks so sometimes it's quicker than trying to get a delivery they're gonna push them right ahead like all right guys we got five cubes of blocks and our mortar and our parge Let's see how clifford does I think he's gonna do fine. I've hauled that much with my uh, my F-250 truck, so I gotta grab something. So I think Clifford can handle the extra two pallets there. I'm pretty sure. Everything's hooked up, ready to go, tailgate's good. We're gonna get out of here. A little shotgun pilot's in here, right, Ro? Hey, buddy. Say hi. All right, guys. I got pulled over, and they're actually gonna weigh my truck. There's the cop who got me here, going down 81. So he's gonna weigh me to make sure I'm not over. He thinks I need a a class one license to drive this rig like this because my trailer is actually registered for 14,000 pounds even though the truck is under the truck is only rated for 26,000 pounds so i don't need a cdl but when i hook up to the trailer i need one so he's going through some safety checks and he's going to have me pull up on the scale which is going to weigh me and then i'll have an idea how many pallets of blocks i can haul legally um, i think i'm pretty good right now but not with this truck so have to derate my trailer so guys i'm not overweight but being new york state they make you the combined weight of everything so my truck is registered for 
26,000 pounds. I'm under that with two cubes of blocks. My trailer is registered for 14,000 pounds, which I'm under that on the trailer with two cubes of blocks. So what I need to do is deregister my trailer or derate my trailer from 14,000 to uh, 10,000 and then I could tow it with Clifford but I can only put two cubes of blocks on so um, this officer was nice he weighed everything for me um, so that I know what I can haul so basically I got to do a few things here but he suggested I derate the trailer to 10,000 pounds then I can haul two cubes of blocks on the trailer with my mortar and two in the box and I'm still underweight so that's what we're gonna do but I can't tow it home like this so I have to uh, unhook at a gas station here Sunoco they were nice enough to let me stay here or let my trailer stay here and I'm going to take the truck back to the house get the pickup truck because the pickup truck believe it or not I can haul this but I can't with the with the dump truck because of the combined weights it's just how New York State is New York State police so unbeknown to me I went through a checkpoint not realizing that I have to pull in there because I was told I don't have to pull into the to the DOT checkpoints with this rig but I do I guess so um, from now on I got to pull in there if the lights are flashing which I didn't do that's why I got pulled over initially so that's how my day's going guys it was going good for me and rotor till that happened right Ro? right buddy we're having one of them days aren't we we're having one of them days huh? I had to let Ro out and put him in the shade here nice tree for shade but that's how my day is going guys trucks are rolling by here boom boom I'm the one in trouble this is uh second time this week I got in trouble I rode my side by side I guess on a road I wasn't supposed to be on earlier or that was Sunday and I got a ticket for that so I think this one here is going to be a fix it ticket but hopefully I'll let you know Okay guys, so I have to leave my trailer here because I can legally tow this trailer with my F-250, but I cannot tow it with my dump truck. So, copper's over there. He wrote me up, not a ticket. He just wrote me like basically a fix it, fix it. She, I just gotta fix everything and then I have to send it in to uh to uh the state and they're gonna just throw it away basically it means nothing just if i get pulled over again i gotta show that i fixed all this stuff so uh he checked everything out everything was pretty good just this combination weight thing got me jacked up so i'm out of here me and clifford are gonna run out of here and rotor little shotgun pilot we're gonna get out of here i'm gonna run home i'm about an hour from home Get the F-250, come back, grab this. I'll show you that. Okay guys, I'm back to get my trailer. Craziness, I gotta pick up the trailer with my Ford F-250. There's my trailer. I had to leave it here. So now I'm gonna hook it up to this truck that it's not gonna haul as good as the dump truck did. Me and Rotor. It's definitely gonna be tongue heavy, that's for sure. Watch out, Ro. Ro, move. Hey, come here. Get out of the mirror. Well, I'll show you what it looks like when I get it hooked up, guys. I gotta back into this thing. It's not gonna like it, because I've done it before. And we got that front pallet really loaded forward. All right, guys, I gotta hook back up to the white truck my f-250 diesel she is squatting hardcore because of that pallet normally i would keep that pallet back that way because i've carried this with this truck before in trailer but um with the dump truck i wanted it way up front because it just handled it better but i'm uh, riding high in the front here as you can see 
I think we'll be all right though. That's the setup. Gotta get back to the job here. The day's over. Wasted the whole day with this deal. Well, we made it back with the blocks, guys. I just unloaded the mortar over there with uh, Carl the Kubota. But now we are going to get Kevin the Kubota to unload these bad boys because they're heavy. Question for you. What? You know, side unload this front one? Yeah, I'll get the front one from the side. We'll pull them back and grab them from the back. So we can get the first one from the side, guys. Wishes he could do this. <laughs> Got her now, bud. That's what we're having for breakfast tomorrow, folks. squatting a little. dragging the other. That's all she wrote.
back post pads. Do a wheelie. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs>